Hi, right, it's time for another math easy solution. Uh, to discuss further into parametric equations, we now go over example 10 of the uh, example series, which looks further at the cycloid curve. And now we'll look at part four of the cur uh, of the uh, proof of that curve. And in this case, I uh, will basically solve this example, which states eliminate theta in the parametric equations for a cycloid to show it as a Cartesian equation. And again, recall Cartesian equation is just when you have that x, y coordinate system. And when you only, when you only have two variables, etc. In this case, we have, and I've already alluded to in part one of the proof video, if we el eliminate theta from the parametric equation, we get this formula, which, which is x equals to r times inverse cosine of 1 minus y divided by r minus square root y times 2r minus y. So let's go uh, and uh, try to solve, try to uh, eliminate theta from the uh, parametric equation. So if you recall from my earlier videos, I went over the parametric equations, and those were for the cycloid curve x equals to r theta minus sine theta, and y equals to r one minus cosine theta. Yeah, so now to solve this, the first thing we could notice is that the only thing that's a bit different than, than both these equations is this theta by itself. So what we'll do is solve this first formula for theta and then plug that inside here. So what I mean by that is let's just rearrange this so that we have x over r equals to theta. I just move the r on the other side, minus sine theta. So we have theta equals 2 x over r and then we have uh, then move this over so it's plus sine theta so x over r plus sine theta and now that we have this theta we could throw this inside here and then bring that over together so what we have and move this y I mean this r on the other side we get y over r equals 2 1 minus cosine of yeah, cosine of, now we have this theta, which is x over r plus sine theta. So now what we'll do is uh, separate this to have cosine by itself. So we have cosines, move this over to this side, move this y over r on the other side. So we have cosine theta equals to cosine, this x over r is the same thing, plus sine theta equals 2 and then we move that so we move this on there so it's positive 1 minus y over r like that so now what we can do is, is get rid of this cosine by taking the inverse of it just like we have in this formula there so we have an inverse cosine there so when we do that what will end up having happening is we have a theta equals 2 uh, well that theta is just equal to this uh, x over r plus sine theta, which equals to another right side, we take the inverse of the left to get this. So inverse cosine one minus y over r, like that. And you can learn more about uh, inverse trig functions, functions in my earlier video, but one thing we should note is we always need a one-to-one -one function. So if we were to graph, or for example, recall that if we were to graph y equals two, let's say cosine theta, then the inverse is when we switch theta and y, so we have uh, theta equals to cosine y, and then by definition the y solving for it is just by an inverse. So inverse cosine of theta. And when we graph this, all we're doing is switching the x and y coordinates. So if we graph this, if we have theta here, and we have y there, let's say we were graphing uh, from here, this is at, let's say, 1, so this, we're starting here, this is the cosine curve. It looks something like this, etc. But all we uh, want to deal with is because we need a one-to-one -one function. So if this is at, yeah, if this is at, I'll just fix that up to make it a bit better looking. So if this is at negative one, at this point is pi, this is at pi over two, and this is just our cosine theta function. But when we switch, the uh, variables to have uh, basically we inverse them so all the thetas become y's and all the y's become thetas we need to make sure it's a one-to-one -one function so the most common 
uh, one for the cosine is by looking at the interval where theta is between pi and zero like that. And we can see this by when we switch the variable. Here is at pi over two and zero, so instead we go to zero and pi over two. Pi over two is 3.14 divided by two, that's actually greater than one, so that's gonna be somewhere here, pi over two, I'll write it here, pi over two. And then when we have the starting point of zero, one, that's gonna be now at one and zero. So one and zero is gonna be over here somewhere. So this is at one, so one is less than pi over two. So that means this curve goes something like this, and then pi over two, our last point here is, is at pi negative one. Instead we get a negative one and pi, so double that. We get pi over there, so then it goes something like this. Yeah, here, just fix that up. So it looks something like this. This is where we have inverse cosine theta, like that, or y equals to inverse cosine. And then here we have y equals to cosine theta. But notice we only separate from these, uh, this interval from zero to pi because if we continue further, what we end up having is something that looks like this where we have uh, not a one-to-one -one function. For example, at one theta value, we get multiple y values. So that doesn't work. So that's why we enforce this. And in our case, well, we have cosine theta. So theta is between uh, zero and pi as well. Yeah, so now the next step is, well, the only thing we have remaining is this theta, or this sine theta. So we can get rid of that but by noting that we have this y equals r times one minus cosine theta there. So we could uh, use an identity to basically uh, eliminate this cosine and sine theta. So what we'll do is, well, note or recall so recall the famous Pythagorean trig identity, and I'll put the link below in the description for the proof. The most common one where we have, where we have sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals to one. So what I'll do is solve for sine, and what we have, we just move this cosine onto this side and square it. So we have sine, Yes, sine squared theta equals to, well, one minus cosine squared theta. And then if we take the square root, we get a sine theta equals to plus or minus square root one minus cosine theta. But since this cosine, we're squaring it, what this means is that here, this is greater than, or this is in between, uh, basically cosine squared theta is gonna be in between uh, one, that's the highest value it can be, and then greater than zero. So it's like either it could be zero, if it's negative one, if, then we just square it, so it's always positive. So that means this entire thing right here, one minus uh, zero or one, we're gonna get, well, greater than or equal to zero. So that means this is a positive. So this is what sine equals to. Sine equals to positive one minus cosine squared theta. Yeah, and the thing is we know what cosine equals to, and that's again from the second parametric equation, y equals r, one minus cos theta. So what we have is a y equals two r, one minus cosine theta. So this equals two, move this over, we have y over r equals to one minus cosine theta. Move, uh, separate this so we have cosine theta by itself. So we have a cosine theta equals two, move this over here, move this y over r onto this side, one minus y over r. And now the next thing we want, because we want a cosine squared to match this, we could just square these. So square this, square this, and then we can solve this. We have now a cosine squared theta equals two and multiply this out. Same thing as writing one minus y, y over r, one minus y over r, and expand this. So, yes, so that we get now one times one equals to one, one times y over r is just y over r, y, negative y over r times one, that's just minus y over r, and then we have, well, the same thing as two. This is, we could just put it two, those are the same, they add up. And now we have minus one, y over four times one, times minus y over four, that's just plus y squared over r squared. 
So now finally here, if we just factor out this y over r, or instead uh, we can factor out y over r squared, and the reason we'll get to that in a bit, that's because when we, well, we scroll down all the way here, yeah, when we scroll here we have an x over r, there's a square root, well actually they'll come in uh, later because I've done this before, but uh, so instead we'll just keep it as, as is for now, we'll just factor out uh, negative y for now. So this equals 2 or negative y over r. So we have 1 minus and then we have y over r. Negative y over r. This becomes 2 and then so that's positive 2 when we take out negative y over r and then we have a minus y over r like that. So now that we have this cosine squared theta we could throw that into here which is sine like that. So thus, sine theta equals two square root, and then it's one minus one, uh, right here, one minus uh, cos theta uh, squared, which is this one minus uh, theta over r, two minus y over r, like that. And this whole thing is square root around the whole thing. Now this negative was one and one cancel, so what we're left with is, well, and then this negative here becomes positive. So the whole thing becomes positive inside. So we get a y over r, two minus y over r like that. And in fact, I will take out the r. So I'll just, I'll just take out this r so that we could put the r there and square like that. So if we, if we factor out the r as well, we get, yeah, we get something like this. And you can even see if you multiply this inside, we get 2 over r divided by r squared of r's cancel here will just be with the r squared like before. And again, the reason we're doing this is because that's how the equation finally looks like. We have this 2r minus y, which is interesting. That there's our 2r minus y. And we'll go even further and, and write this as as by taking out this uh, r squared. So this is going to be 1 over square root r squared. And then this is a y 2r minus y, which just equals to 1 over r y 2r minus y, like that. So that is what our sine looks like, our sine theta. So now finally we can throw this all inside here. So what we get is, and I'll uh, first of all I'll rearrange it so we have a x over r plus sine theta equals to number inverse cosine of, I believe that was 1 minus uh, y over r. 1 minus y over r. Yeah, like this, and then we're going to just simplify this even further. We'll add this, uh, add this over here inside, so we have x over r plus 1 over r square root y 2r minus y equals to cosine negative 1 minus uh, 1 minus y over r, like that. And now we could just uh, move this onto the other side and multiply everything by r so we get rid of this. So we have finally x is equal to r, multiplying everything by r, cosine negative 1, 1 minus y over r, and move this over to the other side and multiply by the r. So we have minus square root y, 2r minus y, like this. Yeah, and if you notice, this is the exact formula we were trying to solve. That's all the way here, r cosine, inverse cosine of uh, 1 minus y over r, and then there's minus square root y times 2r minus y. And, yeah, and what we notice is, again, we have to make a note, is that this is only valid for theta is between uh, pi and 0, or we define it to be valid for this. So you, when you always solve this, you always have to define your interval. And again, the most common interval for co inverse cosine is between uh, pi and 0, or 0 and pi, like that. Yeah, and now if we were to graph this, and here I put a link to the uh, calculator here, which graphs it both as a parametric equation and as the, um, the one we just defined, the Cartesian one, 
and that's here is the original one. As you can see, it's much simpler writing in the parametric equations where we have the r, and instead of uh, theta, I just put t. So we have something like this, and notice how it goes like this, and we could change this value. We'll say if we put 100, it just goes across like that. And this is from negative 10 is uh, theta. Yeah, the theta or t is the same thing. I just didn't want to go look for that symbol. And then this one here, notice this is this, and we could change the r, etc., and it changes for them, which is pretty cool calculator. I, I highly recommend checking it out. And now if we graph just the Cartesian one, notice it goes from here to the top there, which is very, very interesting. So here I put those equations. So in this case, t is the same thing as our theta. Just to uh, make a note. So when we graph this notice here, all the thetas are gone, and I set r equals to 1, and this red is all the way up to here. And notice that if, uh, by definition, this is just a circle, it's a point on the circle. So if we were to draw a circle like this, and then this is at this point across, so at this very height, this is a rotation of uh, theta equals to pi. And notice that it, it goes all the way up to there, yeah. So basically this goes from here to the top, which is from the starting point here where theta equals to zero, all the way over to here. And notice the distance across here uh, is just going to be the arc length, as I went over in my earlier proofs on the, uh, on the cycloid. This is just, well, r theta. So the distance, fully, full distance is r theta, and in this case it's going to be equal to, uh, this, this one's r is 1, but let's just write r times pi. So that this right here, the x variable is the distance here is x, or this is just our x coordinate. So it's for theta's between 0 and pi, or, uh, or we could move this over. I'll move this over here, or x is less than r times pi greater than uh, 0. So whatever the r is, like that, multiply, because that's the distance is just the arc length, as I've gone over it many times. So, and uh, just one more note before I finish this video off. Note, it is not possible to write y equals f of x in a closed form expression. So we can't write y equals f of x in a typical form. And I will explain closed form expressions in more detail in a later video, so stay tuned for that. But basically, it's writing uh, just a simple equation uh, in terms of uh, this form right here. We could write uh, x equals f of y, but we can't write y equals f of x for this particular one. It's just too complicated to get rid of this y. Anyways, that's all for today. I hope you learned from this very extensive proof video. And just to show you that how complicated the equations can be uh, when we don't use parametric equations and also how simple they are when we do use parametric equations. So when we notice these are actually much simpler to deal with than this full equation and it doesn't even graph the full thing, we have to select an interval, while this one graphs every single value of theta. Anyways, that's all for today, hopefully you learned. Like always, you can uh, download these exact notes and link below, and thanks for watching, and stay tuned for another math easy solution.